I am back to review episode 7 of The Walking Dead titled When the Dead Come Knocking. Now, I don't really want to do a recap for this episode because me personally, I feel it's not really worth it. Although this episode was good, it wasn't great in my opinion. Because the recent episode that we got, um, episode 6, I felt like they gave us an intro, well, an introduction to the, to Rick versus the governor in that episode, and I felt like this episode that we just got, I feel like we, I feel like we was going to see Rick versus the governor in this episode, but we didn't, and I, I, I think that's kind of stupid because in episode six they like kind of hyped it up, showing Rick them, you know, getting ready to come to Woodbury. But in this episode, of course, we see them going to Woodbury, but we never see them even attack it. But I don't know. It didn't make no sense. So I felt like we are getting a... I feel like in this episode, we got a second introduction again to the Rick versus the governor plot. So that's just how I feel about it. But as I say, it was good, but it wasn't great. It was kind of stale at moments, but overall, still good episode. Now, let me talk about a scene that got deleted from this episode. And this scene right here was very important to me. And a lot of people don't realize that a scene actually, this scene actually got removed from the episode. Me personally, I never seen the scene, but I will put a pitch up to show you guys that this was an important scene. I'm about to tell you guys about the scene. It have a scene where Rick ends up finding out, well, ends up finding their soldiers that the governor and his men killed. And that right there was important because this right here would have gave Rick an early introduction to who the governor really was and how dangerous he is. Because, I mean... It's, it, it just it just would have felt right for the, um for them to do it, and then also, Michonne would have well Michonne would would have exactly knew what would have happened because when she was in Woodbury, I mean she seen the vehicles um she seen the vehicles and it had bullet holes in them and it also had splatters it also had splatters of blood on the vehicles, and I'm pretty sh I'm, I'm pretty sure she um I'm pre I'm pretty sure she. she she, she know where they. She, she knew where they came from. I'm pretty sure she she knew where they came from because I mean that was um, um, co um covered in camouflage. So I'm pretty sure she would first thing that came to here. Yeah, he had to kill these people because I seen their vehicles in Woodbury with bl with blood um, splatters on them and um, bullet holes in them and stuff. So I felt like they should have put that scene in this episode. So 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 Rick could basically know who he was dealing with. Next scene, uh, this scene right here, it was some, it was somewhat some important, but it really wasn't. We seen that Carl and Rick finally named the baby, and she had this, and she, and she got the same name from the comic book, Judith. That's right. Carl named her after his third grade teacher, and his third grade teacher name was Judith, and he named um the baby that. She's a girl. For some of you who don't know, she's a female. And I want to talk about this one too. I want to talk about when Rick then run in, well, runs into this, uh, runs into this cabin, and they think it's abandoned, but come to find out, there's a hermit guy, like literally living in the cabin, with a dead look. Well, I think it's a dog, a dead decaying dog in up. And Daryl say it stinks. And this guy. Has been living in has been living in that cabin for ten months. He has never got attacked by a walker before, and I don't know how that is possible at all, people. You've been living in that cabin for ten months, and the walker never attacked that cabin or never attacked him personally. How was he able to do that? And he had to know about the walkers and how dangerous they was because when Rick. Because, I mean, when Rick pulled up the cover, he had a shotgun in his hand. So, where was this guy? Where was where was he when the zombie apocalypse occurred? But then again, as I just stated, he had to know about him. He had a shotgun in his hand. So, yeah, I'm pretty sure he knew about how dangerous they was. But we can tell that this guy was very paranoid. 
because he he tells Rick, I'm going to I'm going to call the police after he realized he was outnumbered. Because we, we see Daryl standing on the side of him with his trusty knife in his hand. And for some of you who didn't realize this, but I definitely noticed this. Rick pulled the same tactics on that guy that he pulled on Shane to kill Shane. Because he tell a guy. The guy asks for his badge because Rick tells him, yeah, I'm the police. Because the guy say he's going to police. He, he's going to call the police. And you can tell that he's probably delusional in the, in the head because he don't know what's been going on. Out there. The police don't even exist anymore. If you can basically, as I just stated, Rick tells him, I'm the police. And he tells Rick to, to basically show me your badge. Give me some um identification that you're the police. And Rick, and Rick, I mean, it's crazy, but he pulls the same thing he pulled on Shane. Except he don't kill a guy. He kills Shane though. He tells the guy, "Look, watch my hand. I'm gonna put my I'm, I'm gonna put my gun down." But this time, he actually put his gun on the ground, and he told tell the dude to watch his hand again. Well, well, he told the dude to watch his hand while he um reaches for his badge. And the guy that's sitting right there looking at him, and we see Rick just literally. Knocks the end of the shotgun out the way, and then the guy ends up firing somewhere else. And we see how the guy tries to escape, and Michonne ends up stabbing him in the back. Well, impelling him through like the shoulder blade part. And he ends up dying because at first Oscar was like, Y'all, you guys are kind of wrong for throwing him out there. And, and Rick said, I checked him, and he's dead. So. It was kind of wrong, but then again, he was already dead. He would have turned anyway, so I totally agree with throwing him out there, feeding him to the walkers to um, cause distraction, cause distraction, so, so they could escape out the back door. But he definitely pulled that same tactic on that guy that he that he pulled on Shane. The only difference is he didn't like drop his gun with Shane. He gave Shane his gun, and then he stabbed Shane with the knife. Next, I want to talk about this. Uh, this old guy, uh, Michael Coleman. Now, Michael Coleman was one of the science experiments for um, Milton and the governor. And the governor stated that he volunteered because he knew he was dying. And Michael Coleman, he was dying from um, prostate cancer. Yeah, prostate cancer. And here's the thing. Milton said he couldn't do much for him because we all know it's a zombie apocalypse. So, their doctors are dead. Or a majority of the doctors um, that he knew that was helping him with, with his counsel, helping him contain it and treat it, is dead now. So it wasn't nothing they could do. And, and plus, they and plus they don't even have the right equipment to treat him with. So he ends up dying. And Milton comes to a conclusion that he basically will walkers. Well, Milton comes, comes to a conclusion that walkers still have some sort of memory of themselves deep down inside of them. In which could be true. But does that does that uh, does that logic apply to every walk? I don't think so. And and I mentioned this. I know I never mentioned it because I said I was going to mention it in my next video. But people, say, oh man, you know about Morgan White from season one? And I was like, of course I know about it. Her name is is Jenny. It's Jenny. Yeah, Jenny. Jenny is Jenny. And it's it like, oh, you know about her twisting the doorknob. And you say walkers are dumb. I was going to do a separate video about that. That's the reason why I said in my preview discussion that basically I was going to talk about that another time. Because I didn't want to talk about that at that moment. But yeah, I think that uh, every, well not every walker, but some walkers do maintain some sort of memory on who they once were. Now I'm not saying that that, that, that applies to every walker. Because perfect example, look at Morgan wife Janie. Janie looks through the peephole of the door and, 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 and then she twists the doorknob. So that right there tells you that the logic could be right. I definitely say it's right, but I don't I, but but I definitely say it doesn't it doesn't apply to every walker. I mean it's just how it is. All right, now let's talk about Murrow basically, uh, um, you know, interrogating um, Glenn. We can see how he's interrogating Glenn, telling Glenn that basically y'all left me on top of the building by myself to defend for myself. 
And we can see how Glenn um, tells him that we did come back to save you, but you wasn't there. And we can see how Merle is still upset about this. He's still upset about what happened. And and, and that's what I find funny because he's, he, he calls Rick the old sheriff, the, the sheriff, the sheriff. As because we all know Rick used to carry have on um, the sheriff outfit in season one. Here's the thing though. What Merle don't know is Rick is not the same man that Rick is not the same man that you seen in season one. Back in season one and season two, Rick had this black and white mind perspective of the world, if you get what I'm saying. He seen the world different from people. That was in the zombie apocalypse too. Some people seen it as it's it's the Bible of the fitness. You got to do whatever it takes. It don't it don't matter. You you have to kill even if a human tries to attack you. You can't let them leave. You have to kill them. But Rick seen it different. If back then in season one, if a human would have tried to attack Rick, he probably would have tried to you know fight him off and then save him or give him a give him a fighting chance or let him live. But now. Rick sees this world different. He don't see that. He don't see this world. Well, he don't see that world in the, in a black and white perspective anymore. So, so, so what Merle don't know is Merle do not realize he ain't. He is not going to be messing with the same Rick from season one. This Rick right here is totally different. This Rick will kill Merle. Trust me. Ain't no more handcuffing him to a roof because he was on drugs and beat the shit out of everybody. He almost killed T Dog. Ain't no more of that. Rick will kill Merle now. And Merle do not know that. Calling him the sheriff and stuff. Talking about the old sheriff that left me on the building and stuff. And we also see Glenn headbutt him. And Glenn has and Glenn is holding his own. I can definitely say Glenn's holding his own. Because Glenn, Glenn used to be a piece of delivery boy. And he also used to be the flunky. In the errand boy. He used to always go get supplies when he didn't really want to. But he did it anyway. So... Yeah, Glenn has definitely grown grown from season one. His character has. Now we also see we also see where Merle gets mad because Glenn is not act, answering his questions. So Merle tries to torture him, literally beats him to death with his left hand. Now Merle has Merle packs a punch because he literally beats the shit out of my bad for my language. He literally beats the mess out of Glenn with just his left hand. And as I, as I stated before, Glenn did headbutt him and like reopen the wound that Michonne caused on him on his nose when she kicked him in his nose in the previous episode. And we see he gets so frustrated, he sends a walker in the room to kill Glenn because basically he wants Glenn to feel his pain, how he felt, because he was handcuffed on top of a roof and wasn't and wasn't no way, wasn't nothing he can do to get out. Well, he didn't have no way to get out, um, to get unhandcuffed. So he didn't want to um you know, get killed by a walker. So he so he did what it took what it take to um to um get unhandcuffed, literally cutting off his um cutting off his his um hand. So he basically wanted Glenn to suffer the same way because Glenn was um similar to the it was similar to the same way he was. He was handcuffed on the roof, but Glenn was tied up in the chair. So he definitely sent Son of Walker to kill him because Glenn was not answering any questions. And we also see another scene with the governor talking to Maggie. And let me state this right here. The governor has not really shown no signs of being evil to me. I mean, I understand that he can't have every aspect of his counterpart from the comic book. I understand that concept. I understand it. But at least give him some signs. I mean, come on. Putting, putting heads in a fish aquarium is not scary. It's just creepy as hell. That's all. It's just creepy, but it's not scary. He hasn't really shown no signs of it. I mean, and so I start asking myself, is this guy a villain? Because because the governor I know would have raped Maggie from the comic book. He definitely would have raped Maggie because he definitely was, was, was raping Michonne. I mean, they ain't have to show it, but I don't know, man. He, it's questionable. It, it's questionable now. Is this guy a villain or not? I mean, the stuff that he does... He does it for he does it for a reason. I mean, when he killed those soldiers, he obviously did it for a reason. I mean, the reason he did it for was not justified, but it was still for a reason. But now, but now the governor in the comic book, he just does shit. 
It don't have to be justified or or um, or unjustified. He just does it just to be doing it because he's evil. But this guy right here have reasons for what he does. I mean, I don't know. I really can't call him evil. I really can't. But he did not rape Maggie. And he, so, so we see another scene where he brings Maggie back into the room. And basically, and I see what he tried to do. I would say he was kind of smart for this. He was bluffing with Glenn. He tried to make it look like he raped Maggie. So Glenn could start talking. But Glenn still would not talk. So he literally puts the puts a gun to Glenn's head and Maggie tells him where the prison is at. Or she tells him about the prison. Now it's revealed that he been knew about this prison. He was just scared to go take it over because he said it had too many walkers. And he asked her how many people was it there who basically took him out. And she said it was 10 of them. And he got shocked, but he also got scared in the process. Because he, he thought in his head, wow, 10 people was able to take out this, take out these many walkers at um at the prison. And also Michonne asked the same thing to Beth, Hersher's daughter. How y'all was able to clear out this prison? And she tells him 10, but then she say, basically mentions that most majority of the people that was with him died afterwards. And also, Thomas asked the same thing to Rick them. He was like, how you three pussies was able to take out all of these people? And he even he was shocked by this. So we know Rick Force is, is definitely something to reckon with. Definitely. Nah. This is when they get real. We see the governor talking to uh his henchmen, including Merle. And he basically um tells Merle that yeah, they basically did what they, they basically did what you say they couldn't they basically they basically did what you say nobody couldn't do. And that's take over that prison with just ten men or ten people in general. And he asks Merle. Basically, blood is blood. But basically, whose side are you on? And Merle hesitates. And he looks at him. Now, we can tell that Merle is not completely on his side. Because remember, in episode 3, Merle tells him, I'm going to go basically, I'm going to go look for Daryl without, with, with, or with, or without your permission or without your me. I'm still going to go look for Daryl because that's my brother. We're talking about my brother here. That's the reason why he asked Merle that. Like, blood is blood, basically. Whose side are you, are you on? And Merle tells him he is, but he he also hesitated. And I don't believe Merle at one, I don't believe Merle one bit. He definitely going to choose Daryl over, um, over, over, over the goat. So we definitely have a war coming up pretty soon. And we definitely see Rick them standing over there by the cars and stuff, taking cover so nobody couldn't see him because, I mean... The governor is scared like shit now. He's scared. Ten people was able to take over that prison. Also, let's include this. Rick then was able to take over that prison with very little but with very little ammunition. He literally tells Carol that we don't really have an, um, a lot of ammunition, so don't waste bullets. You let 10 people with very little ammunition take over that prison. When you tell Andrea, you have a whole thing of guns. When, when they had breakfast that morning, they got all type of guns. But you let 10 people take over a prison that you couldn't even take over. So, yes, Rick them is definitely a force to be reckoned with. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm telling you. I'm telling you. But, uh, but overall, this right here was my review for The Walking Dead Episode 7 title when the dead come knocking i hope you guys enjoyed it and uh peace and have a nice day